Hello and welcome to the No Public Excuses Show, the only podcast in real estate investing that teaches what you need to know to find and flip deals right now. Wow. Break free the chains that are holding you back and join us on this episode with Jason Lucchese. Hey, what's going on? It's Jason Lucchese and welcome to the No Flipping Excuses Show. I am so excited that you are here with us right here, right now. We are doing a continuation episode for this week's show, and I am so, so excited that you are here with us. We've got Larry and Mariska back in, but before I go ahead and introduce them back with us so we could share a bunch of stuff about distressed assets, including non-performing notes, performing notes, and other things that we discussed from last week's episode... And I wanted to tell you, we've got some amazing things going on with our Asset Manager Millions group. It's on Facebook, so make sure you go over there, join us. It's absolutely free. There's no charge. We've been sharing amazing content when it comes to finding asset managers that you can get bulk deals from and flip them for massive profits. So it's absolutely free. And then we're going to be doing a Facebook Live with myself, Larry, and Mariska. And we're just going to be covering tons of questions that you guys, the the audience out there, have for us. So make sure you join us. That's on June 26th at 8 p.m. Eastern. So I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be an amazing live episode that the three of us are going to be putting on. But without further ado, I've got my good friends, Larry and Mariska, with us. How are you guys doing? Hey, we're doing awesome, Jason. Good to see you again. Yeah, good yeah. seeing you guys too. We uh, had an amazing episode uh, last week and we were getting tons and tons of people commenting, loving the strategies and loving everything you guys were sharing on that show. So did you guys get any feedback from uh, from folks out there as well? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, it's it's kind of like, Jason, you're, you're a great interviewer and, and well, thanks. you're you know, you ask some great questions and when you, when you're able to ask questions and you can, you know, you basically you can, you can get the right answers, you know, but yeah, we've, we've, we've shared with some, some of our friends and, and they've been going, God, this is great. You know, so they're very curious about what's going on in, in, in indie town as well too. So yeah, we'd, we'd be happy to talk more about that too. Yeah, sure. absolutely. Um, and, and before we dive in, if you guys aren't aware, we, we're having an event, and I know we talked about it a little bit at the end of the show last week, but we're having an event. It's going to be all on distressed assets, properties, raising private money, a bunch of great stuff. It's going to be something unlike any other event out there because we're going to be having you, uh, when you attend, you're going to actually be uh, not just learning from us, you know, yapping up at the front, but you're, it's going to be a very interactive event where you could walk away uh, with things that you're doing at the event rather than you come back home on a Monday and you're like, oh, shoot, uh, I forgot all three days stuff. Even though you took great notes, you're like, oh, I don't understand this note uh, that I left because we've all been there. We've had that happen. Uh, this is going to be something completely different. And that's what we aim to do is give you guys all the tools that are necessary. So July 26th, through the 28th here in Indianapolis. If you want more details, have questions, send me an email. It's J-L-U-C-C-H-E-S-I-V-I-P at gmail.com and put in the subject line A-M-M live. And we'll have a, a little thingamajig here down below that will uh, you know give you those details as well. But uh, Larry Mariska, anything that you guys wanted to share about the upcoming event? Well, I want to say too, it's like, you know, I've been kind of watching some of the comments going back and forth, back and forth on that Facebook group. And, and one woman said that she's going to be in town with her, with her son, who's going to be like in a, like in some kind of a basketball tournament or something like that, you know, and, and it's, it's a commitment, you know, wealth is basically, it's a, it's not just a quick overnight thing. It, it's, it's a strategy. And, and, you know, people are taking time out of their, their summer and, and time from their family to, to go and attend to something like this. They are really the ones that are, you know, to should be patting on the back for what they're doing. You know, it's, it's, yeah. it's, I, I think we've, we're, we're, you know, from what I can tell, we're having a great group of people that have been, been saying, Hey, I'm going to be there and it's going to be awesome. Yeah. And, you know, uh, playing on that, I've, I've kind of been following some of the Facebook group too. And, and somebody uh, made a comment and, and asked, you know, 
or, or said that she's really interested in, you know, learning how to do a business virtually. And, and that's the thing that's so beautiful about the note business is it really can be done virtually. You don't have to be in Indiana to do a deal in Indiana. You can be in Washington state, for example, right. or you know, wherever. I mean, we've, we've got, uh, we've got note assets, you know, all over the Midwest and we've never seen a one of them. <laughs> so, <laughs> I was just gonna, yeah, I was just going to ask like, how did that discovery come about to where you guys got into this business and you were able to realize, hey, we don't have to actually go and physically look at these assets, these properties. When it, when did that discovery take place? Because you guys started around the same time as me in, in the, you know, as a full time investor. Yeah. So why don't you guys kind of touch on that a little bit? Because you guys you know, like you said, you're, you're up in the state of Washington, you're, you're way up there and you're talking about, you know, you've, we've got this whole country to, yeah. to be doing deals in. It's a lot of properties. Uh, so yeah. how do you, how did you guys figure that out? Well, you know, it was a bit of an evolution and, um, and, and, and let's face it, technology has made it a lot easier. Yeah. Uh, you know, once upon a time, you know, banks had, you know, branches, well, they still do. They have branches all over the place, physical branches, but you know, a lot of them are going virtual now too, but the advent of technology has just made it so much easier to have a virtual business because there's apps where you can, you know, look at, at, you know, literally drive down the street and see what the neighborhood is like. And, and there's all of these companies that have risen up to help support people who are in this business, you know, anything from, you know, property preservation and code enforcement folks to, you know, loan servicing companies and workout companies yep. to, you know, I mean, you obviously you can, you know, get your title reports and, and all of that. You can, you know, order BPOs or, or connect with, uh, with, you know, physical real, real estate folks who are on the ground there, but there's so much that can just be done virtually now. And, and I, I think technology has a lot to do with that. So, you know, I, I, I think that's been part of our evolution and, and then also just, you know, talking with different people over the years and, and learning that, you know, that this even existed and, uh, and then just jumping in. Yes. It's absolutely been a, been a journey too. And, and part of it too is basically it's like really, you know, we, we discussed a little bit last week about uh, just using your calculator, calculator and just kind of figuring out what are my exit strategies. And, yep. you know, we've had properties where we've had six exit strategies and, and, <clears throat> you know, not a worry as far as if we're going to get into a situation where it's it's a property that we're going to be stuck with. You know, it's it's you know, really right. that's managing risk, right? right? I mean, risk management is all about how do I cover my downside? What if the worst happens? What am I going to do? And if you can cover that, I mean, it, it really helps you sleep. It helps me sleep at night anyway. No, I I hear you, and you know, with with all of the things that you guys going on. Uh, you know, you go, you go to events, you meet a lot of people, you guys have been doing a lot of deals over the years. You obviously came into the business right around when I did. So we saw a, a huge market correction happening yeah. at that point in time, probably one of the biggest, uh, since the great depression. And I, I since you brought up kind of like, you know, covering your, your risks and all that kind of stuff, I wanted to ask you guys, cause we've asked other folks on the show what they think. What do you what do you think's going on right now with the market? Well, let me get my crystal ball. No. <laughs> yeah, r rub it for us. Let it, let us know what you see in there. <laughs> well, I mean, look, Larry and I have been predicting a a downturn or a market correction or whatever you want to call it for a couple of years. I think we're overdue. Now, is it going to happen? I don't know. Right. I mean, it, it seems like it should. I mean, our, uh, if you look back historically, we have these cycles of seven to 10 years and, and we're overdue, I think. But could there be other forces that, that cause this, this run to go on a little bit longer? Sure, that could happen. I mean, it, it's already, you know, at least in our area, um, you know, the, the market has stayed pretty good longer than we expected it to. And, and you know, there's these little bubbles up and down and stuff. So, so who knows? I, I guess... I guess the maxim of, you know, expect the best, but prepare for the worst. I right. think that applies to real estate. You know, you always, you know, one of our mentors told us a while, you know, a long time ago, he said, cover your downside, 
let the upside take care of itself. And that, you know, we've, we've kind of embraced that philosophy and um, I think it's, it's served us well. Well, and unfortunately, history is sometimes kind of forgotten. And a lot of the banks are loosening up their credit to a point where they're, <laughs> they're, they're doing zero down and, and, you know, cash back at closing and, and, and yep. so forth too. And that's just, you know, I think that that's, can be a problem as well too. You know, there's, yeah. you know, even in our area, there's, there's USDA loans that are just crazy, simple well, and even, applications. And even, even conventional, you know, and I mean, the, the full on liar loans that we had you know, back in 2005, six, seven, oh, yeah. you know, those, those haven't, you know, fully emerged yet. But so I think they are being more careful, but I think, you know, as time goes by, yeah, like Larry said, people have short-term memories and, and institutions even have short-term memories or they get greedy or I'm not sure yeah, what. I was, I was just going to say, it's it's definitely a greed thing because we were, you know, when I was at Countrywide, we were doing the the no income, no asset, the the stated income, stated asset programs, the, the yeah. NINA, the CISA. And one of the craziest ones was um, the stated W-2 income. So it's just what like, is that? It was a it was a special program that only certain branches could do. But I'm telling you, the branches that had the capability to do that, they were doing like 40, 50 loans per loan officer every why single month. It was crazy. Yeah, so, why? you know, the the main thing that people were seeing back in the, the last market correction was, you know, a lot of these adjustable rates, subprime mortgages, you know, just they they came to that three year term and the rate jumped from five point five to eight point five and now somebody's payment went up substantially. Uh, that's you know some of the things that we saw back in 09, 2010, 2011, You know that was the major problem, and a lot of the people were you know at a hundred percent financing. You know they were doing seventy five twenty fives or eighty twenties to where it, it would equal out to a hundred. But everybody was getting back into debt. One quick story before I, you know, I'll, I'll do a little ramble here real quick because I, you you guys hit the nail on the head here when it, it comes to talking about folks not learning. Uh, <laughs> most people that we would talk to and we would pay off all of their credit card debt and do 100% cash out for them. Like I'm talking sixty, seventy thousand dollars $70,000. They would come back to us six months later and say, hey, can we do another one we uh, we just bought a, a boat because they just paid off all that debt and now they want to get like a an RV and I'm just like what the heck we just paid off all your debt and you're back into even more debt right. <laughs> so yeah. it just it yeah. just goes to show people are people are gonna always want to keep up with the Joneses uh, people are always gonna want to max themselves out on credit cards uh, you know their housing all of that kind of stuff and do, do I see a correction happening like last time? It's not going to, in my opinion, it's not going to be like last time because we, we don't have the subprime loans like we used to. And right. believe it or not, they're starting to circulate back. But um, yeah, it's just crazy seeing some of the stuff that that's happening now. I think the major part is people aren't going to be able to afford uh, their cars, their houses, uh, because of a lot of the student loans that are out right now, we're talking trillions of dollars uh, that that are out there. And and again, I don't have my I, my crystal ball or or anything yeah. like that. But you know, when we're talking trillions of dollars in consumer debt and student loan debt, you know, yeah. there's obviously some sort of a problem there. Well, and you know, the other thing is, you know, in areas on you know, particularly on the coast where housing prices are crazy, like they are. I mean, the incomes there just how do young people particularly afford to buy a home um you know even you know folks who've got a few years under their belts um you know unless they've had you know other houses that have appreciated and they can kind of build and step up but i don't know how quite frankly young people um can afford to buy a home these days because the, the prices are so insane you know and, and we just talked to somebody recently who um you know had a, a high income earner um, had a, a very nice house, very nice house. And, you know, but, but they were on a, an interest only LIBOR, you know, that was at like, <laughs> you know, it was a super low interest rate. Oh, man. And then after a period of time, you know, it went to amortization and the interest rate jumped and suddenly they couldn't afford this beautiful house anymore. You know, and I mean, so, so even though the subprime 
stuff isn't happening, there's still these weird things that, you know, that percolate up. Yeah, I just, just, I hope pay option arms don't recirculate because those were awful. I remember uh, we did a lot of loans for, you know, celebrities, not me personally, but I remember seeing that we, we did do loans for like Paris Hilton, Nicolas Cage, some of those people. Paris Hilton's, you know, people made, you know, decided to have her do a pay option arm. Well, her, when she got the loan, it was like in the like two and a half million dollars. And a year later, when I checked it, the balance actually went to two point eight million dollars. And I'm just like, whoever did that for her is obviously not looking out for her best interest. That's, Jason, that's when I got out of the loan business. I was I was originating uh, mortgage loans in the late 90s. And when one of the reps, big name bank that no longer exists, yeah. um, <laughs> it wasn't countrywide, it was another one though, um, they no longer exist. And, and when the rep came in and was telling us about these option arms, I said, I can't sell that to my clients. And they're like, why not? It's a great product and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, for a sophisticated borrower, maybe, but I said, all of my clients are going to go negative amortization and they're, they're their mortgage balance is going to balloon up. Yeah. And for those of you who don't know what an option arm was, every month you had an option of paying either a 30-year amortization, a 15-year amortization, an interest-only payment, or a minimum payment that was less than interest-only. So you can see what would happen. Oh, I mean, yeah. It was- <laughs> yeah, it was it was nuts. And, you know, one of the things... Um, you, you talked about here with, you know, the kind of like a new generation of, of buyers. Yeah. Why don't we hop into that? Because you've got the millennials, uh, you've got people that may have just gotten out of college. Uh, they've had a couple of years under their, their job belt and yeah, housing isn't going to become, you know, any, any easier or affordable for them, especially if they're living out on the, the West coast or the East coast. It's just, it's difficult. So for, for folks like us, investors, would you say right now becoming the, the bank and having looser, not so much looser terms, but smarter uh, terms with seller financing, you becoming the bank and creating notes? What, what do you guys think of that? Well, I think one of the things that Marsh and I do, we, we surround, ourselves, surround ourselves with smart people like yourself. And build a team and you know get the best education we can. And, and just we're always out there talking to people and, and saying, okay, how can we be, or really be a deal architect? Yeah. And so with, with these, whether it's a individual home seller or, or a bank, you know, we're always trying to figure out how can we solve their problem? And yeah, there's, there's so many different avenues when you've got those tools in your tool about how can I, how can I do this? There's those ways you can go and, and, you know, create win-wins for everybody. Yeah. Yeah, and, and I think seller financing, you know, it, it was very, seller financing is is not super popular. I think it's about six percent of the loans that are done are, are seller financed these days. But you know, back in the what was it, the the late seventies, early eighties, when interest rates were like you know eighteen twenty percent, right. seller financing became quite common um, because if let's face it, if you wanted to sell a property the only way you could get a buyer to buy the property was if they could get financing. And if you can't afford an 18, 20% loan, it's not going to happen, right. you know? And, um, and then the same thing, you know, like right after the crash, when the credit market was super, super tight, you know, there were more people who were seller financing. You're encountering that now in the Midwest with those uh, sub $100,000, uh, uh, you know, properties that the banks aren't interested in financing. Yeah. If people want to buy or sell, you have to have seller financing yep. pretty much unless you have all cash. So I, I think seller financing is is definitely going to be playing a role, and I think it can play a really critical role. And I think people really need to understand, you know, what are the factors that go into creating a good seller finance loan product? Because, yep. you know, you can go to your attorney, sure, and you can make sure that everything's legal. But is it going to perform, you know? And so learning what those, you know, and, and as loan officers, we, we kind of have a little bit of an edge because we were trained by the institutions, hopefully. Right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, but I mean, there are factors that, that we know, you know, uh, are predisposed people to default. Um, you know, it's not going to necessarily, you know, this is a hundred percent sure, but we know that certain things like no down payment, 
well, that's, you know, you don't have any skin in the game. And we know things like, you know, your credit really sucks. <laughs> that's going to be a factor too. So, so there's different things that we can look at. And, and quite frankly, I, you know, we, we look at notes a lot of times that have been created with seller financing and, and um, you know, the, the seller who created the note, they didn't even pull the borrower's credit, you know? <laughs> so it's, it's kind of surprising sometimes. I'm thinking, gosh, if somebody's going to buy my house, I think I kind of want to know if they have the capacity to repay, you know? That, that, yeah. And that, that's just nuts. And, you know, one of the things, you know, I just want to remind people if you're interested at all at, you know, being the bank and controlling, you know, paper, having cash flow coming in every single month, having that recurring revenue coming in, make sure you join our free group on Facebook. It's just called Asset Manager Millions. And I'll have like a little uh, thing here below that just says Asset Manager Millions. So you can uh, go over, join the group for free because we're going to be having that Facebook live coming up on June 26th. You don't want to miss it. 8 PM Eastern. Uh, it's going to be under the events tab too, uh, just so you could put it and jot it down on your calendar. So again, join us over there, the asset manager millions group on Facebook. It's absolutely free. Uh, we would love to have you because we're covering amazing content right now and we're going to be covering even more. Uh, we've got so much information to share. Uh, it's it's hard to go over it on just you know one or two podcasts. Uh, so we'd love to see you over there. But uh, Larry Marishka, as we're coming in here, let me ask you this: because you said seller financing really wasn't uh, you know a very known or I w- I would even venture out to say it's not really something sexy that a lot of investors uh, want to get into because they they might be somewhat uh, timid. Uh, mainly because of Dodd Frank, and there's ways around uh, Dodd Frank. Do you guys want to f- kind of tell people what Dodd Frank is, and you know some of the things you guys are doing to kind of you know navigate around that? Yeah, yeah. So for th- people who don't know, Dodd Frank, uh, named for Chris Dodd and Barty Frank, two congressmen who put together or just kind of spearheaded this behemoth bill. And and whenever Congress comes up with a behemoth bill, there's always a lot of fallout about it. But yeah. basically, it was in response to the housing crisis and the financial crisis. And so it's, it's you know, I don't know how tall it is. It, you know, if you stacked up all the papers, it's probably a couple feet high. Um, so there's a lot of stuff in there. Um, but, but the idea was, is let's protect consumers, let's restrain, you know, lending institutions and, and financial institutions and, and, you know, make sure that everybody plays nicely. And so the intent was good and the repercussions were many of them unintended. Right, right. <laughs> And so, um, so one of the things that came out of that was, you know, with, with seller financing is, is we kind of need to act like banks and we, we need to qualify our borrowers and, yeah. and, you know, make sure that they, the biggest thing really is to make sure they have the capacity to repay. And so what you can do and, and what, you know, we do and recommend people do is, is use an RMLO to basically underwrite your borrowers um, that, you know, they can collect the application and the income documentation and, and just say, you know, Hey, these people, yeah, they look like they have the capacity to repay. And, and, and if you document that, um, you know, that, that just puts you in a much better position. The other thing that it does is, I mean, as far as, you know, protecting you from, from repercussions. So a borrower can't go back and say, Hey, you know, these people stuck me in this loan that I can't afford, you know, it's like, well, look, you know, you told us X, Y, and Z. And so we structured this accordingly. The other thing is that if you do that, your note that you've created now has greater value. And so if you decided that, Hey, these monthly payments that I've been getting are great, but I had this other opportunity that could be even better. Maybe I could sell my note. And if you have that package, uh, that underwriting package uh, for the borrower, your note has better value and you can sell it for more. So that's just another little added bonus. <laughs> let, let me ask you guys this, uh, Larry Marishka, who are you selling them to? Because we're getting a lot of people are, that are asking like, well, well, who am I supposed to sell these to? Like, I don't know who to sell them to. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I, I could give the flip answer and say anyone and everyone, but the, the fact of the matter is uh, 
probably some of your potential buyers are right under your nose and you don't know it. Yeah. So yes, we network with a lot of other note investors because, you know, we buy and sell notes from each other. Sometimes we have things that fit that they have, and, you know, it, it just works out that way. But the re- and, and the truth is too, there, there's a lot of people who have money tied up in their, in, in, or their individual retirement accounts that <clears throat> they would like to find something that they could invest in that will give them cash flow. And we know for a fact that there's, oh gosh, it's like 30% of all money that is it's actually self-directed IRA companies is sitting in cash. And really it's a matter of where can I put my money? You know, there's, there's people that are <clears throat> really excited about what the stock market has been, been doing for the last year, but there's a lot of people that have, look, have looked at the numbers and go, you know, we're actually about uh, within about 500 points from where we were last year. That makes me a little nervous. You know, it, it's, <laughs> so, so let me give you an example, because um, what Larry said is uh, absolutely right on. And we, uh, you know, we, we know a lot of folks. And so we were um, a mortgage broker who we're friends with, and we've referred a lot of business to him over the years. Um, somebody was asking him about, you know, alternative investment strategies. Um, young, young couple, and, and quite frankly, a lot of times young folks aren't that interested in, you know, this kind of boring note strategy, but, but they had been invested in the stock market right. and they were getting a little leery about that. And so their, their loan officer, who's a friend of ours said, Hey, you know, I know these folks and they invest in notes and blah, blah, blah. And you should talk with them. So, you know, young couple, just, you know, professional couple. Um, they came over and we chatted about notes and we explained what we do and how we find them and this and that. And so they said, you know what, this sounds really good. We like the idea of investing in something that's going to provide us monthly cash flow and is secured by hard real estate. Because when I invest in the stock market, I don't have any control. I don't have a hard asset that if the if the stock tanks, I have something that I can now sell and, and recoup some of my money. Right, you know, exactly. So they like that. So I mean, that's just one example. Um, you know, my my sister, <laughs> you know, has been watching us, and I never, I we never push anything on our family sure. and don't talk about it. You know, sure, but you know, she came to us and said, you know, hey, I've got a little bit of money, and um, I don't really understand the stock market, but I, I'm really interested in what you guys are doing, and so you know, she's investing with us, and and you know, just different friends and family, you know, and when you talk about what you're doing and you explain the benefits of a note that is secured by real estate, that trips a switch for a lot of folks. Oh, yeah. Here's the thing too. It's like, if you've got a note that, that's performing and you, you, you've got somebody that comes to you and say, well, I've only got X amount of dollars. And it's like, it, I know that that's not enough for me to buy a note. Well, sometimes it might be enough to buy, to buy a whole note. But on the other hand, it might be enough for us to sell a partial of one of our notes. And so we actually, you know, we, we like to buy performing notes and then, and then keep them for a while and make sure that they're performing good. And then we'll sell a partial of it. They, they may say get for a certain price, get 100 payments, maybe 200 payments. And then after their time is up as far as with those payments, then, then the payments come back to us. Yeah. And what really encourages them and makes, makes it really easy for us to basically sell that, that particular type of package is that they know that we are watching that note we want to make sure that it performs well, that they're getting their payments because in a hundred payments, we're going to be getting, we're going to be getting the note coming back to us. And we're going to, we're going to be getting the balance of the of payments. So we have an interest in making sure that it continues to perform. Oh, and, that's awesome. And, you know, and, and, you know, Larry talked about, we, we do buy performing notes a lot, but you know, with a non-performing note, you can also take it and get it re-performing. And once it gets us, you know, maybe you do a loan modification or maybe you just talk with the people <laughs> and get them back on track. Yeah, weird weird and, thought, right? Talk to somebody. Yeah, right? <laughs> Crazy. Um, but, you know, get them back on. And so once they have a pay history again, it's, you know, now it's been, you know, paying again for a year. It's, it now is considered, you know, a re-performing note. So you can do the same thing with that. Um, and then there's going to be those folks who, let's face it, they're they're a little, they're okay with a with a higher risk because they want those higher returns. And and so there's going to be people who might want to partner with you on a straight on, you know, non performing note or or getting into an REO or something like that. Yeah. So, well, let me ask you guys this because for for most of the folks out there, a lot of our listeners are you know doing you know 
real estate, not the note yeah. side. Classic, what What's yeah. the difference in the in the closing? Just so folks can can kind of grasp and kind of see it. Like what What's the difference in the the closing versus? Well, we all know the closing uh, for you know just a property transaction, but what's entailed with a, a note transaction? So simple, simpler. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, it's yeah. so much simpler. So, um, you know, you can use a, a, you know, an attorney or a title escrow company, just, you know, depending on the area of the country that you're in. And it, it, it's really simple documentation. So it's, you know, you, you have, um, de- depending on the type of note that you have, I mean, there's typically an assignment of, you know, the deed or the mortgage or what have you. And, and then, you know, the launch that goes along with it. And I mean, it's just, it's super, super simple. Before that, of course, you want to do your due diligence and you want to make sure there's proper chain of title and all those other things that we talked about on the previous episode. Yep. But, uh, but the closing process itself, super simple, super simple. No, I, I, I know notes, notes is much more simpler than it, it leads to be because a lot of people... Um, aren't doing notes as much yeah. as I would would like to see. So, you know, one of the big things that we're going to be doing is covering more about notes and all that kind of good stuff at the upcoming event. But we're going to have something free in the Asset Manager Millions uh, group uh, on June 26th. So make sure you join us in there. It's going to be a, a live video with us. You can interact with us, ask us questions, um, all that good stuff. Uh, we're really going to be, you know, leaving no stones unturned. We want to make sure that everybody that's going to be on that live video uh, is going to be able to walk away feeling confident and comfortable. Um, and, you know, I love the things that Larry and Mariska, you know, are all about. And we've we've teamed up here to really bring together something amazing for, for everyone. So make sure you join us in the Asset Manager Millions group on Facebook. We'll have uh, the Asset Manager Millions thing here uh, right, right below so you, you can know exactly uh, where to go. But as we're wrapping things up here, is there any parting words uh, from you guys, Larry Mariska? Actually, well, I had one of thought too. You know, a lot of people think, well, geez, you know, if, I've got, if I get a non-performing note, how, what are one of the other, other strategies for me to, to try and get it back to performing? <clears throat> There's actually still, from, from the crash, there are hardest hit funds that are available in different states that are go and government programs in each state, not in well, not in every state, but um, a lot of states. a lot of states that will help, will help borrowers, you know. Yeah. And and that's the sort of thing that really the the big banks. It's it's kind of sad that they're not actually utilizing some of these things to help people. And yeah, yeah. there's not as many uh, of, of those funds in those states that have those funds available as there were a few years ago, but. but in certain states, they still are available. So, yep. you know, people Google hardest hit funds <laughs> and see it. <laughs> and fascinating. <laughs> no, I hear you. And, you know, I know as we're running out of time here, one of the other things I was going to talk to you about since you, you brought up the Midwest or the and we'll kind of leave this as a teaser for what we'll go over on the on the live video. But one of the big things, especially with people that really have a difficult time getting financing, are people that live in mobile homes. So being able to put a note on a mobile home and receive, you know, a crazy return on your investment is is really huge. And we'll we'll kind of touch on that on our live video that's coming up because we are running out of out of time uh, for the show. Uh, so besides besides that, that's just going to be one of the one of the things I'll be talking uh, to Larry and Mariska about on top of the, the things that we're just going to be covering um, make sure you join us for that, especially if you want to hear more about mobile homes and the opportunities, because there is a huge opportunity for that. Uh, it's it's crazy huge. So uh, besides that, is there anything that you guys want to let the listeners know about? Well, I'd say if you haven't signed up for Asset Manager Millions, I think you need to get on it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> be there. Yeah, it's it's going to be a commitment as far as your time, but it's going to be well worth it. Yeah. You know. No, Anything I'm excited about it and sacrifice for, I think, you know, and, and, uh, you know, we just, we just want to share, you know, Jason wants to share. That's why we got together is, you know, we just kind of wanted to share our knowledge with folks and, and, you know, do we know everything? No, we don't, but, uh, but we know quite a bit and, and we can point you in the right direction. One thing I want to say about, yeah. you know, the three day event, if I may, um, you know, I, I, I don't want people to walk away thinking that we're going to do the work for you. No, we're going to teach you to fish. 
we're going to teach you how to do this yourself. Yep. So, um, I think that's the, the thing that, you know, and, and really, I mean, that's, that's what allows you to build a business is, is, you know, not just have somebody hand it to you and say, here, it's done for you. And it's like, well, you, I didn't learn anything. I can't replicate this, you know? So I like how you set that up. No, I, I love, I love that you brought that up because it's, it's, it goes with anything. You, uh, you go and buy a franchise, even though you're buying a franchise of something and you're putting a ton of money into it. It's not like you're just going to, from day one, start cash flowing immediately. The, the great thing with what we're going to be doing is we're going to show you uh, that you don't have to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars to get a franchise set up. We're going to show you that you can get this set up uh, really fast and you, you can start cash flowing immediately, unlike if you went out there and, and bought you know some sort of a franchise uh, yeah. which would take you, you know, two, three years to recoup just your initial investment. And then right. you could start making some money, maybe. Uh, so there's a lot of maybes and what ifs. And, uh, you know, franchises are very time consuming. So trust me, uh, that that really resonates. I love that you brought that up, Mariska. Um, so we're, we're really looking forward to it. If you have more questions uh, about the upcoming event here in Indianapolis, it's coming up next month, uh, July 26th, 27th, 28th. And I'll put my email below and I'll spell it out for those that are listening uh, through iTunes or whatever you're listening to it through. It's uh, J-L-U-C-C-H-E-S-I-V-I-P at gmail.com and put in the subject line A M M live and we'll get you all the details that you need i uh, would love to hear from you too so if you have any questions too that you would like for us to answer on the live video make sure you join us in that asset manager millions uh group and post your questions in the group but all, before you even post that introduce yourself tell us a little bit about yourself we would love to know as much as we can about you and feel free post your question we're going to be answering them live on the 26th uh, but besides that, uh, Larry Mariska, thanks for joining us for uh, part two, the continuation of our amazing episode from last week. Really appreciate you guys, and uh, I'm. This is just awesome that we're we're doing this and working together and you know helping people out. It's really cool. Thank we're you. Super honored to be here. Yeah. Thank you so much. Absolutely. No problem. <laughs> you guys have an amazing day, subscribers out there that are listening. If you enjoyed this, make sure you hit that like button, give us a five star review on iTunes. And I will see you next time. Take care. Bye now. Have a great day.